Shalom. I'm Pastor Scott Villain with Holy Impact Ministries, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Q&A, where we try to answer your biblical questions in 10 minutes or less. This week's question is, are we truly once saved, always saved, according to Scripture? I simply cannot tell you how many times I've heard misguided pastors, priests, bishops, and popes wrongfully and shamefully teaching the man-made, once-saved, always-saved doctrine of demons to their congregations. There's simply no point in dancing around this particular subject. According to Scripture, there is no such thing as once-saved, always-saved, and those who preach and teach such things should be ashamed of themselves. The Scripture is extremely clear from the beginning of the book to the end of the book concerning the fact that repentance should be first and foremost in the heart and in the mind of a true God-fearing, Messiah-following, cross-bearing Christian. You simply won't find the phrase, once saved, always saved, anywhere in the confines of the 66 books of your Bible. The only place that you will find the once saved, always saved doctrine is within the confines of the writings of men and their philosophical theologies and denominational dogmas. But when we read the scripture for ourselves, and when we read the book from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, as we should, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that the once saved, always saved doctrine of demons is nothing more than do as thou wilt is the whole of the law, which comes right out of the devil's Bible itself. The devil would like nothing more than for everyone to believe that they are once saved, always saved, and therefore do as thou wilt is now the whole of the law. This, in a nutshell, is what our adversary has been hoping for since the fall of man back in the Garden of Eden. If he can get man to believe that all he has to do is say a 60-second heartfelt prayer down at the front of the aisle with his favorite pasture, and that he is then once saved, always saved, and therefore do as thou wilt is now the whole of the law, he can lead man right back into the pit that our Messiah gave his very life to pull man out of. I'm sure you've probably heard all kinds of philosophical sermons, theological understandings, and denominational doctrines concerning the once saved, always saved doctrine. But here today, I'd like to present you with nothing more than Scripture. We don't need to go to the writings of the rabbis. We don't need to go to our prestigious Bible commentators. We don't need to have to ask our so called early church fathers. All we have to do is to read our God-breathed scriptures for ourselves and ask in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, for the discernment to truly understand. Let's start with 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. And again, we're going to be at 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 14 through 22. It says this, They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in in greed, accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boasts of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true pro pro proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. No once saved, always saved doctrine of demons can be found within the ministry of Peter. Let's try Hebrews chapter 6, 
verses 4 through 6. Again, Hebrew chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm, and holding him up to contempt. No once saved, always saved doctrine of demons found here in the book of Hebrews. Let's try Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 31. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 says this, For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Let's move down a little bit to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear beyond the shadow of a doubt that a professing Christian can indeed lose their salvation. If the Jews, who were his chosen people, were rejected by our Father in heaven, what makes you think that he will not reject you if you do not continue in his kindness? Romans chapter 11, verses 19 through 22. Then, you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Need we continue on? Because we can. There is much more to know and to understand. But before I let you go, I'd like to turn to one more scripture found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 10 through 14. Again, the book of Ecclesiastes, And we want to go to chapter 12. And we're going to go verses 10 through 13. It says this. The preacher sought to find words of delight, and uprightly he wrote the words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything beyond these. Of making of many books, there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Do yourself a favor. Sit down and read the book for yourself, and read it from the beginning to the end, and not from the middle to the end. You'll be glad you did. Shalom, everyone. 